it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to explain in detail auxiliary routes in the Angular 2 router. It's coming right up. So first of all, what is the use case for auxiliary routes? Let's give an example. For example, we go here to the courses screen. We would like when the user clicks in an item in the courses list, we would like a playlist to be displayed here in the right hand side of the page. This playlist is a section of the page that might contain different content depending on where we navigate in the application. Now, we could definitely add the playlist as a component inside the courses component, right? That would be a solution. But imagine that this section of the page will always be filled in with a certain playlist no matter where you navigate in the application. So here in the courses screen, it's showing the playlist of lessons of a given course, but in the lessons route, it might display something else. So the lessons route contains a list of the latest lessons. Well, the playlist might display in that case, the list of the most frequently viewed lessons. In other words, we want this section of the page to behave like if it was a mini browser window with its own navigation URL separate from the main URL, so that when you go back and forth to a given route, we can match it to a different component. If you find yourself in this situation where you have multiple regions of the page that you want them to react differently to the URL, let's say dialog boxes for editing forms, or the left side menu that you want to adjust each time that you navigate, this is a good case for an auxiliary route. Okay, so then let's configure a route, an auxiliary route for the playlist. So we are going to use the playlist path and when that path is routed to, we are going to associate it to the playlist component. Now we are going to mark this as an auxiliary route by filling in the outlet attribute. We're going to call this outlet playlist. Now, to which section of the page does this outlet correspond to? We're going to configure that by adding a second router outlet tag to the page with the name playlist. So the only difference between an auxiliary route and the standard primary route is that it must have a name. The default route does not have a name by definition and it has its own separate outlet which specifies the section on the page to which the routing is going to be applied. Well, you must be thinking, then how do we access this route using just the URL? Let's find out. So if we access this page, we are going to see that there is nothing in the playlist section because we have not routed to it. In our URL, we only specify that we want the primary route to display the home component but we did not mention anything about the secondary route. And how could we do that? Because after all, there is only one URL in the browser window, right? How can we specify the second URL of the auxiliary route? Angular provides a special syntax for that. So here inside parentheses, we are going to say first which outlet we want to route to. We're going to say it's the playlist outlet. Now we add a colon and after that we are going to add the URL of that outlet to which we want to route to. And it's as simple as that. If we try this out now, we can see that the playlist is being displayed as expected. Let's give another example. Let's say that when we are routing to the playlist path inside the playlist outlet, we want to display, let's say, completely different component, the courses component. Let's try this out. If we now navigate to playlist-path inside the playlist outlet, we're going to see again the courses component. So this shows that this outlet really has its own separate routing configuration, where there is a separate URL. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can always subscribe to my channel for more upcoming Angular 2 tutorials. Also, have a look at the website of the Angular University to see what type of Angular 2 tutorials you find there that you might like. One key thing to understand about auxiliary routes is that they are just plain routes, so they have all the properties of a standard primary route. You can define child routes, etc. You can nest them one inside the other. 
it's really like you have a different section of the page with a completely separate URL to which you can provide a completely different routing configuration. We are going to go deeper in this course in auxiliary routes. This is just the beginning. Actually, in the end of this course, we are going to use auxiliary routes extensively to build a dashboard with multiple auxiliary routes. Next up, we are going to see auxiliary route parameters.